As someone who has built a brand around being creative and productive with your tech, as well as have created and sold hundreds and thousands of digital planners, it only makes sense that I take you along for how I'm planning my entire life for 2021. Hi friends, I am Kirsten, but if you want to be BFFs, you can call me Kay, and I'm a planner. With the new year, I knew I wanted to dedicate an entire video on my process for planning this upcoming year, as well as things I do on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis to keep myself and my goals in check. Because I have literally created so many planners and tried out so many different planning systems, I have found my own that really works for me that I have been slowly integrating into my newer digital planners and into my videos. I call it the perfect planning system and its name is honestly kind of deceptive, but a lot of you have started calling that, so I went with it. Essentially, the system aims to give you the tools to make it your own perfect planning system. And I'm gonna show you how I put it into practice today. By the way, if you're interested in anything I show in today's video, check the description for links, I'll have everything there. Because it's the new year, I do things I wouldn't necessarily do on a monthly, weekly, or daily basis. For instance, I choose my word of the year. Now there's a bunch of exercises you can do to figure out your own word or three that really resonate with you for 2021. And it's more or less a mantra to keep pushing, keep you motivated and inspired. So for this year, I am choosing two words, intentional abundance. Especially near the end of 2020, I realized how beneficial it is to be intentional. Intentional with my words, what I create, what I share, what I buy. It applies to a lot of areas in my life, and I knew long before preparing for the new year that I wanted this to be my word. Abundance came later. 2020 has been kind of a dumpster fire, but given that, I noticed a lot of people kind of finding abundance in less, whether they felt more abundant with more time with family, abundance of Zoom, perhaps, or small businesses seeing more support than ever, kind of like k Digital Studio. I just wanted to go into 2021 with an abundance mindset, that I can find things or discover things that make me and others around me feel fulfilled and full, even if we might end up with less for the year. I haven't done a vision board in a while because sometimes looking at randomly aesthetic photos from the internet isn't particularly inspiring to me, kind of like a lot of vision boards I've seen are. So I am incorporating a few of my own photos, words that I still want to remind myself of, or a few art pieces that I really like and want to explore further for myself. It's totally cool, by the way, if you do your vision boards that way. I've obviously included a few aesthetic photos that resonated with me, but I feel it's important to make that connection back to yourself. So I also incorporated my words for the year into my vision board too. After setting up my vision board, I move into my Notion dashboard. I've used Notion a lot and wanted to incorporate that back into my routines. I use Notion kind of more like my commonplace, something I don't necessarily need to, to turn to as often as my digital planners, but kind of more like a dashboard of everything that is me. I put my word of the year and some goals for myself here. It's kind of at the top of my notion to give me a sense of purpose and direction. The rest of my notion is created around my perfect planning system, which is refine and envision where you determine where you are now, where you don't want to be, and then finally where you do want to be in one, three, five years time. Then non-negotiable on top three, things you have to get done that week, and then your top three being directly related to your micro goals. The third step is routines, setting up routines and habits that work for you and the life that you want to live with, of course, trial and error to find that realistic middle ground when it comes to setting up routines for your life. Next is revisit, which is a really important step. A lot of us take on a new skill or a new habit or a new routine, new project, or come across a piece of wisdom but never actually act on it or implement it into our lives. For instance, this most often happens with meditation for me. I know the benefits. I have tried so many apps, read so many articles and blog posts on it, but I don't implement it. It doesn't stick. So I think incorporating revisit checkpoints into our planning systems is important. It's kind of like taking a pause and thinking to ourselves, have I actually implemented this into my life? As well as think, are there things that don't fit into my life right now that I should stop doing? The last kind of pillar of the perfect planning system is create. We're weird and we're human and we like to create things even if you think you don't. You'll get burnt out if you never take a pause to do something you enjoy just for the heck of enjoying something. I try to create something every day and I'm not talking about some elaborate painting, maybe it's just a doodle or playing a video game. You're creating enjoyment and something for yourself because otherwise you will burn out. 
I plan on creating more in-depth videos on how my Notion is set up, but for now I organized it in such a way that reminds me to do all those little steps of the perfect planning system. I also find it helpful for setting up a yearly happenings page in my digital planner. So I created this in Procreate and it's available as a freebie on my website if you wanna download it and use it for yourself or even print it and just take my goals month by month. Anyway, one of the most helpful things I have started doing for myself is setting up theme days. So on Mondays I do bookkeeping and Tuesdays might be a day where I create digital planners or stickers. Sundays are usually my weekly reset days, Saturdays being my weekly clean days is kind of my main focus of the day, and that is something I plan on doing throughout 2021 as well. You know I like to set up my monthly spreads in my digital planner, planning out deadlines, appointments, launch days. This year I am using the 2021 Digital Perfect Planning System Planner. And so those are available in Monday and Sunday start now. I created an entire video on it if you wanna check it out and see if that planner will be a good fit for you for 2021. I typically set up my weekly spreads more so when classes are in session and I typically like to do that a week in advance. Because I am a student though, I also like to put all my assignment dates and deadlines in my Google Calendar as well. Having the same deadlines and dates and whatnot in more than one place is accountability, so that's what I do. The last few months of 2020, I started getting more into daily planning. I needed something simple and I didn't necessarily like using them that much within my digital planners themselves, so I created the Perfect Planning System Daily Pad. It's just a pad of daily pages for the year that obviously incorporates the main tools of the Perfect Planning System. I have used this for a few weeks now before its official release and it's honestly working out perfect for me, and again, holding me accountable for what I set out to do. Thank you so much for watching. I'm not going to jinx 2021 by saying anything super positive right now. We all kept saying 2020 couldn't get any worse. And yeah. Anyway, I created an entire page on my website that goes over the perfect planning system. It's what I'm going to use to plan and organize my entire life. And it includes links to all the tools I showed you in today's video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I am so, so very excited for all that K-Digital Studio has planned for 2021, and I'm so ready to share even more content about owning your planning system and making it perfect for you. I will see you back here next week with another video. Bye!